Imagine a story so, so captivating, it traverses continents, cultures, and centuries. A tale of one man, revered by billions, whose life's details filled the pages of history and myth alike. Welcome to an exploration beyond the known, into the legends of Jesus Christ's enigmatic travels. Was he merely a man of his land, or did his footsteps echo across the world? Join us as we delve deep into the mystery of the lost years of Jesus. The narrative begins with a question as old as time. Where was Jesus during his undocumented years? Mainstream history is silent, leaving a canvas for myths to paint their colorful stories. From the deserts of Egypt to the serene landscapes of India, from the shores of Great Britain to the distant lands of Japan and America, tales emerge of a wandering sage learning, teaching, and leaving behind a legacy shrouded in mystery. Of course, not all these can be true in a practical sense. Let's venture to the East, where the saga takes a fascinating turn. The tale of Jesus is in India, captures the imagination, suggesting a young Jesus absorbed in the teachings of Eastern sages. But who brought these stories to light? Enter Nikolas Notovich, a Russian traveler who claimed to uncover ancient manuscripts revealing Jesus' Eastern Odyssey. But is there truth to his claims, or is this a mere fabrication? In the year 1887, nestled within the serene and remote walls of Hemis Monastery, high in the mystical lands of Ladakh, Nicholas Notovich stumbled upon a revelation that would send ripples through time. He was about to unveil a hidden chapter in the life of a figure known to the world as Jesus, but referred to here, in this secretive enclave, as Issa, as he was supposedly called in the East. This Issa text, translated for Notovich from Tibetan by a monk, alleged that during his lost years, Jesus was educated by yogis in India, Nepal, and the Himalaya mountains. Notovich, captivated by the gravity of his discovery, felt in his bones the authenticity of the manuscript. He declared it to be true and genuine, a sentiment not lightly given. The text, he learned, was not a recent creation, but a venerable artifact dating back to the third century of the Common Era, a testament written in the aftermath of the resurrection. But the story deepens, for Notovich was told that these teachings of Issa, the insights and philosophies of a figure revered in the West, were not confined to a single scroll. No, they were compiled, meticulously, from a variety of sources, texts written in the Tibetan tongue, translated from ancient roles safeguarded in the legendary Lhasa Library, treasures that had journeyed across time and space from India, Nepal, and Magadha 200 years after the time of Christ. According to Notovich, it was Indian merchants, those ancient travelers between worlds, who first carried whispers of Jesus, or as he was known in the East, Issa, to the secluded monasteries of Hemis. They were not merely recounting fables. These were men who claimed to have witnessed a monumental event, the crucifixion itself. Their stories, captured in ancient texts, did not directly place Jesus in the snowy cradles of India or the silent sanctuaries of Tibet, but rather they painted a picture of a tradition that traveled as all profound truths do across mountains and deserts, from Israel to the vast stretches of the East. The narrative twisted and turned with time, like a river shaping its banks, morphing with each telling. By the time these accounts reached the ears of later visitors to Hemis, the story had transformed. Your Jesus was here, they were told. 
What started as a single manuscript had become three, a trilogy of mystery hinting at even deeper secrets yet to be unveiled. However, the threads of time tangle easily. The scrolls, said to be from the capital, Hassa, were written in Pali, a language of the ancients, yet stored in Hemis in Tibetan, a script born long after the days they purported to describe. Historical whispers suggest that the Tibetan language was not penned until centuries later, under a king's reign parallel to that of Muhammad. This timing casts shadows of doubt on the physical existence of such texts before the 7th century, let alone the 3rd, as Notovich suggested. Though older texts might have been composed in the sacred scripts of Sanskrit or Pali, the manuscript Notovich claimed to lay his eyes upon could not have been crafted in the time of the scrolls it was said to represent. A conundrum wrapped in an enigma, the truth of the texts, like many religious relics, seems destined to dwell in the realm of faith rather than fact, a tradition transmitted through the whispering sands of time. What do these ancient scrolls say? They speak not of a historical figure, but of a legend, a myth born from the minds of merchants and monks. The tales differ, morph, and evolve, telling us more about human creativity than about a historical Jesus. Were these stories a blend of cultural tales designed to integrate Jesus into the rich tapestry of Eastern spirituality? In the serene Vale of Kashmir, nestled within the bustling city of Srinagar, known as the City of the Sun, lies a mysterious shrine named Rosa Baal, believed by some to house the tomb of Yuz Asaf, a figure many associate with Jesus. Could this be the final resting place of Jesus, or just another layer in the mythological onion? Skeptics and believers clash with evidence as elusive as the man himself. Yet, this tomb, like the stories, continues to draw seekers of truth and purveyors of faith. However, Nikolas Notovich, during his six-day exploration of this vibrant region, remained silent on this monument in his writings, an omission that puzzles many as any mention could have bolstered claims of Jesus' time in India. The plot thickens with the revelation that Yuz Asaf might not refer to Jesus at all, but rather to Joseph, a title traditionally reserved for esteemed priests. Revered Eastern scholar Dr. S. Radhakrishnan suggests that this confusion stems from linguistic and cultural misinterpretations, with the name tying more closely to the concept of a bodhisattva, a being on the path to Buddhahood, rather than any historical figure. Further complicating the narrative, there are even legends from Japan to Srinagar that weave intricate tales of Jesus and his lineage. Yet, a closer look reveals that these stories, particularly the ones of divine tombs of Jesus and his brother in Japan, might have more to do with presumptions than with documented historical facts. But what drives these legends? Is it the human need for connection? For placing the divine within our landscapes? Or is it something more? We explore how these stories serve not just to elevate Jesus to a global figure, but to intertwine the threads of different beliefs, creating a shared history that crosses boundaries and cultures. In the end, the travels of Jesus remain a captivating enigma, a mosaic of faith, culture, and imagination. His lost years Open up a space where history meets myth, where the known and the unknown dance in the shadows of time. Perhaps the truth lies not in finding definitive answers, but in embracing the mystery itself. In the stories of Jesus' travels, 
we find not just the echoes of a distant past, but the reflection of our collective quest for meaning. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time, legend, and belief. Remember, the path to understanding is a journey, not a destination. Until next time, keep seeking, keep questioning, and keep exploring the mysteries of our world. If you enjoyed this exploration, like, share, and subscribe.